The initial scene includes a popular legal counselor named Lauren Monroe, who is as of now being given an arrangement 1 million bucks in return for safeguarding a lawbreaker in court. In any case, her resolute genuineness and her ethical standards lead her to decline the proposition effortlessly. This is only one piece of verification that Lawrence represents honest individuals and not really for money-related gain. Legal counselors get compensated a shitload. At any rate, however the scene movements to her more youthful sibling named William Monroe, a lawmaker who is trying to get the chairman position of New York City. Then, we are acquainted with Lawrence, Father Bowman Monroe, who is a rich business figure. He is walking through the woods at the moment when he suddenly experiences difficulty breathing. The elderly person some way or another comes to his vehicle, yet he unfortunately dies during his drive back home not long after, Lauren, who is going to a public interview, gets this news, leaving her heart broken. The scene then slices to Bowman's burial service, where Lauren and her whole family accumulate to offer their appreciation after the memorial service, the kin have a concise discussion during which William uncovers that their dad was pleased with. They likewise examine the possibility of moving their mom to another spot that is nearer to them. Following this, Lauren strolls to her dad's office and thinks back the affectionate recollections of him showing her chest. Attracting the game equals to life's intricacies. A couple of days after the fact, the family's lawyer, Harold, appears at report Toxifylite. Will the will assigns Lauren's mother Catherine as the new chief of their organization. William is dispensed with an amount of $20 million, while Lauren, because of some explanation, is relegated with just $1 million. The excess $50 million are specified for gifts to the police and clinical schools. Harold then goes to have a private conversation with Lauren, during which she gives her a package that her father gave to her. Inside it, she finds a USB gadget stick alongside a couple of keys. She embeds the USB gadget into her PC and finds a video message from her late dad. In the video, he utilizes her to maintain a secret truth and furthermore express his regret for not having the option to uncover it during his lifetime. The mystery is you're just worth 1 20th of your sibling. In the following scene, a stunned Lauren chooses to into the woods to discover the unspoken truth. In any case, before that, she is come by her significant other, who is by all accounts worried about her prosperity. However, she simply informs him that she is fine and just requires some alone time. After that, Lauren goes into the woods and uses the key to open a locked surface that looks like an entrance. Earlier, she opens the latch on it, uncovering a bunch of steps driving down to a cellar or apprehensively plummets into the dull dugout. She enters and comes across a door, which she opens to reveal a restrained man. However unfortunate, she strolls nearer to beware of him, yet his unexpected development alarms her, provoking her to escape the dugout. Back at home, Lauren examines calling 911 for help, however her sibling mediates in the nick of time. He feels for her over the inconsistent dissemination of cash from their dad's will and offers to share his part. Notwithstanding, Lauren declines, declaring that cash isn't really important for her. Soon thereafter, Lauren looks at a youth photograph of herself with her dad and ponders a previous contention that she had with him. It turned out that Archer had asked her to stand in court for his wealthy friends. A solicitation she had turned down because of her reluctance to protect. Hoodlums. Come on, honey. My buddy. Bill really isn't a pedo. He just appears to be one. The following morning, Lauren chooses to return to the dugout, this time outfitted with a firearm. She also enters. She finds the man sleeping. So she attentively takes his fingerprints to distinguish him. All of a sudden the man wakes up, provoking her to withdraw carelessly. She returns inevitably with a facial covering and asks his name. Shockingly, the man knows everything about Lauren and her family, including her birthday, her sibling's name, and, surprisingly, her marriage against her dad's desires. Lauren removes her mask and reinterrogates him, persuaded by his familiarity. Rather than responding to the man questions whether she is a decent individual upon her certification, he encourages her to deliver him since that is what a decent individual would do. Lauren, on the other hand, maintains her skepticism, believing that for him to be imprisoned, he must have committed a serious crime. She tries to figure out what's going on, but the man first demands a lavish meal of potatoes, steak, Caesar salad, chocolates, gold, water, and cigarettes. She also wants to understand the situation. With the request for a shave and a bottle of scotch, Lauren says she will lock him up for the rest of her life. 
He knows that her conscience won't let her do that because he has the upper hand. She chooses to fulfill his needs and gives him a razor prior to leaving. After getting back, Lawrence examines the fingerprints and sends them to her family companion, investigator Amelia Sanchez, requesting that he run a mind it as quickly as time permits. After this, she buys every one of the things the man had requested and gets once again to the dugout. Since the man is furnished with such delightful food, after numerous long stretches of repression, he uncovers everything with bittersweet tears bliss. He gets even more emotional when Lauren gives him a chocolate bar. The man relates how her dad would offer him a square piece of chocolate once per year while passing on the lay immaculate on the rack to insult him. Subsequent to gobbling up all the food, he at last uncovers himself as Morgan Warner. He also grabs her hand and apologizes, stating that he hasn't seen her in a long time. Following this, Morgan starts to disentangle his origin story, revealing that he had encountered Bowman 30 years prior and framed a fast companionship as they had comparative preferences for betting cash and ladies. Their bond at last drove them to become colleagues. As for Morgan, 1.12 p.m. Toxifylite was tipsy driving while he was in the front seat. Misfortune struck when Toxifylite struck a passerby bringing about his nearby end. Morgan wanted to call the police, but Archer insisted that the body be disposed of because he thought it was an accident and Morgan should. At the point when the two got into a contention, Bowman secured him in this very shelter. Moreover, Morgan uncovers Toxifylite's issue with a lady named Sophia who had all that Catherine needed. Accordingly, Bowman used to allude to her as his vagabond Rose. Lauren doesn't trust in the most natural sounding way for him. So to back up his cases, Morgan gives her Sophia's location and urges her to really look at it herself. Additionally, he requests that she confirm with Harold, who has been with Archer for a long time. Lauren, clearly unable to process all of these revelations, leaves in rage. Regardless, she manages to remain composed in some way. She then, at that point, contacts Amelia, asking him with checking the foundation. Morgan Warner following this, she drives towards the Gabe address and meets Sophia. At the point when gotten some information about her association with her dad, Sophia answers that. She met Bowman in a poker game. Did she say poker? As the two kept visiting, Lauren sees a photo of a little fellow, inciting her to get some information about him. Accordingly, Sophia uncovers a surprising truth. The kid is her child, Alex, who additionally is Lauren's stepbrother. Overpowered by all of this, Lauren leaves with tears in her eyes. She later goes to Harold's office and yells at him for keeping such a big secret from the family. Accordingly, Harold says that it's his obligation to keep up with privacy. Lauren then gets some information about any extra secret data to which he expresses that there's nothing else that could hurt her. He likewise asserts that he'll in any case keep the remainder of the data stowed away, proposing that she continue on. Thusly, Lauren goes to her mom and asks in the event that she knows all about Morgan Warner. In any case, the name sets off nothing as she can't really understand. Then, at that point, William enters giving off an impression of being worried. When addressed, he says that he is losing votes in spite of giving his very best. William then asks Lauren to join the mission rally because of her standing for genuineness, to which she reluctantly concurs. On that very night, Lauren again goes to the dugout meaning to cover more experiences. She inquires about the location of her father's buried pedestrian's body. Answering this, Morgan proposes an arrangement. He'll take her there provided that she'll allow him opportunity from there on. Lauren agrees, albeit initially reluctantly, and they go outside. Morgan's feelings flood as he gets out of the dugout after such a drawn-out period. He can hardly imagine how he has at long last figured out how to get out in the following scene, Lauren follows Morgan's bearings and drives towards the forest. Inevitably, they run over the internment site and she promptly begins digging. Her feelings of dread are before long affirmed when she uncovers a human skull approving Morgan's claims overpowered Lauren reburies the remaining parts and returns him to the fortification. She then, at that point, orders him to wear his metal collar once more, however he beseeched her not to sell out him, referring to her way of life as a genuine legal advisor, he tells her not to recreate her dad's mercilessness. Morgan additionally voices his own misery, describing that he couldn't go to his mom's burial service because of his controls. He implores her to allow him to spend his excess years in harmony, promising to vanish from their lives without truly hurting any. 
However, Lauren, despite his sincere explanation, he was no longer certain of anything. Apologizes and leaves. A while later, she calls the criminal investigator to inquire as to whether he got any data in regards to Morgan Warner. However, the latter states that it may take a few additional days. It amazes me that this individual is not suspicious. The next day, Lauren visits her sibling's office, looking for direction and imagining that it's for her legal dispute. She presents a speculative situation asking how he would treat somebody who has every one of the insider facts and furthermore represents a danger. Accordingly, William offers two choices discarding the individual's body in a stream or paying the danger to vanish until the end of time. The sky was always meant to be mayor. After cautious thought, Lauren goes to the fortification with a sack and makes Morgan guarantee that he'll evaporate for eternity. She tells him to get ready for his departure once he does and promises that he will be released that night. Following this, Lawrence approaches Harold, requesting that he organize one million dollars and a personal luxury plane for the individual her dad had violated. In spite of Harold's investigation into the rationale, she selects not to unveil it. Afterward, as Morgan prepared to leave, Lauren inquires as to whether her dad had referenced anything about her. He uncovers that Toxophilite was extremely pleased with his little girl, however he could have done without the way that she went against his companions. Right now, Morgan uncovers another mystery. Her sibling William has been paying off the association delegates maddened, Lauren promptly heads to her sibling's office and stands up to him accordingly. The last option concedes that it means quite a bit to pay off for progressing in rank. He declares that even their dad had turned to pay off to get her situation as a lead prosecutor. Hearing this, an irritated Lawrence slaps his butt and leaves, cautioning him not to bamboozle her once more. Morgan finally leaves the bunker in the following scene, bringing with him a chess piece as a memento. As he ventures outside, he breathes in the natural air and encounters a feeling of freedom. After that, Lauren takes him by escort to the private jet, where Harold shows him his new identification cards and explains how much money is in his account. As Harold and Morgan bore the stream, Lauren drives back to the shelter to clean the spot. She discovers a poison bottle during this time. Underneath the bed, in any case, she doesn't respond, it is over to consider that everything. Now, then again, Amelia finds Morgan's record and conveys it to Lauren's home. Catherine gets home at night and opens the package. A couple of seconds after the fact, Lauren goes into the room and sees her mom seeing her bundle. Frightened, Catherine communicates her anxiety, inquiring as to why Lauren has an image of Carson Thomas. Lauren tells the truth that her father had kept him in the bunker for a long time and clarifies that his real name is Morgan. Accordingly, Catherine divulges a stunning disclosure. The man is, as a matter of fact, a savage chronic executioner. Catherine asks where he is correct now to which Lauren tells her that she delivered him in a condition of frenzy. Harold and the pilot's lifeless bodies are discovered when Lauren rushes to the airport. She before long understands that Morgan is currently after her mom. Lauren then, at that point, speeds back home and oddities out when she doesn't track down Catherine there. Scared, she hurries to the fortification and finds her mom resting oblivious while she minds her mom. From the shadows and dives the region into haziness by turning off the lights. He then, at that point, dispatches an unexpected assault and ties her up after recapturing cognizance. Morgan uncovers the genuine truth that he was the one to direct the toxin on her dad that at last asserted his life. He likewise relates the night when he gave a pill to Catherine and constrained himself on her. Bowman spotted him doing as such. Furthermore, subsequently, he drove Morgan to the shelter. On their way, Morgan diverted Bowman, bringing about an impact with a walker. Further disclosures demonstrate that Morgan was the person who covered the body regardless of Bowman protests when Morgan picked to nail the whole fault to Bowman, the last option fought back by actually stifling him and binding him to the shelter. Lauren tries to persuade him after hearing all of this by promising that she will help him get justice for whatever her family did to him. Over time, nonetheless, Morgan affirms that he simply needs retribution, communicating his longing to cause them to persevere through the very wretchedness that he languished over 30 years. He likewise discloses his procedure to obliterate the family's standing by taking advantage of the insider facts. In a dramatic twist, he finally reveals that he is Lawrence's biological father too. Each member, shocking her. Catherine, 
Having regained her composure, scrabs the gun from the ground and shoots him in the head as all of this is taking place, resulting in his death. The film closes as the mother and girl drench the fortification with gas and set it ablaze.